This talk is dedicated to some preliminary work that we did with Frank Reef in the Northern Flanders Ranges in South Australia. Today I would like to convince you that the Flinders Ranges are a wonderful natural laboratory for the study of critical metals and their mobility in the regolith. Uh, and the work there really is made possible by the support of the, the Sprig family who owns the Arcarula station which provides outstanding resources in this fairly remote location. Geology makes the Flinders Ranges a very special place. This is a dynamic landscape as the hills are still rising at about 1 mm a year along a major range front fault. The hills consist of mesoprotozoic granites and high grade sediments and they rise about the mesozoic to modern sediments of the lake from environment in the front here. The mesozoic granites are highly enriched in radioactive elements such as uranium, thorium and potassium resulting in very high heat flow. And the manifestation of this heat flow are the Paralena hot springs. This is the only permanent water hole in the inlier, and as a result of radiogenic heating, the water comes out at about 60 degrees C, and it is enriched in helium and radon, which is radioactive. Uranium also accumulated in the Cretaceous and Tessary sediments of the Lake Foam Embayment where the Beverly and Four Mile deposits are still currently mined using in situ recovery techniques. Radiogenic heating has influenced the northern Flinders Ranges landscape since the intrusion of the granites 1.6 billion years ago. The highest hill in the Inlier, the Mont Painter, is a direct result of the long-term hydrothermal circulation driven by radiogenic heat. Mount Painter represents the remnant of a spectacular Permian epithermal system. Most modern epithermal systems are driven by magmatic heat and they are associated with precious metal deposits. But at Mount Painter, the epithermal deposit is rich in uranium, rare earths, and other critical metals. Uh, this photo illustrates a high temperature magmatic hydrothermal ore that is found just below the epithermal deposits. Uh, this is example is rich in a rare filament phosphates in orange and albion mineral, this brown fergusonite here. The epithermal system itself uh, consists of a massive horizontal quartz body that is drawn here in yellow and sits horizontal in the landscape. Uh, this epithermal quartz contains some hematite lenses in orange and those hematite lenses are locally enriched in uranium, molybdenum and rare filaments. These, forms, these rocks formed very close to the surface as illustrated for example by numerous cavities in the quartz. This one even contains some quartz stalactites. Finally, the Mont Painter itself uh, represents uh, surface deposits in hydrothermal spools. The These rocks would have formed in a similar environment as found today around geysers in New Zealand, for example. Uh, working in the Flinders Ranges has all the beauty and perks of uh, outback Australia, uh, so you have to be prepared for a bunch of flies. It's a semi-arid landscape, so most of the year it will be dry, but when there is rain, the landscape, the river fills up and can cause interesting uh, conditions uh, regarding to roads. At the time of Frank's passing, we were running two pilot studies in the Flinders. Uh, the first one was dedicated to the effects of uranium on the soil biome. And the second one was exploring the role of microorganisms in controlling the weathering of rare earth elements. Uh, today I'm going to show a few results from the latter project. This was part of Alexander Kalintsev's honors work. We selected an alanite bearing gneiss called the Yerila granite for this study. The fresh granite shows large K feldspar clasts in a biotite rich matrix. Due to the active tectonics in this region, the weathering profile is very shallow, with just about 30 cm of saprolite on a thin and a thin top soil. Uh, the chondrite normal as rare filament patterns of the freshest samples in blue here differ only slightly from the regonif samples. The main differences 
is a small loss in uh, heavy wear of elements in the regular leaf sample in red and orange versus the freshest samples. This synchrotron X-ray fluorescence map shows the distribution of rare filament in a fresh-looking Urella granite sample. The orange crystals are rich in cerium and correspond to the silicate alanite, whereas the green spots are yttrium-rich and correspond to the phosphate xenotheme. Uh, those are the two main carriers of rare filaments in this rock. In detail, the alanites are always deeply weathered, as shown by their inhomogeneous chemical composition. These magmatic alanites are rich in thorium and they are now metamicked. So the radial fracture that are caused by the volume increase associated with metamitizations are red in this image. Uh, this suggests that the weathering took place under ambient conditions. Some alanites also show some unique ovoidal internal features highlighted by yellow circles here. These ovoids consist of a core rich in thorium uranium and yttrium, and a rich of cerium fluorocarbonate. On this electron microscope image, the white core is a uranium thorium oxide, and the mobility of thorium in this core suggests involvement of organic acids, as this is the only way to move thorium at ambient conditions. The presence of uh, cracks filled with cerium-4 oxide also indicates formation in near-surface oxygenated waters. Furthermore, the core is surrounded by a porous, clay-rich material that contains an abundance of uranium oxide nanoparticles highlighted by the yellow arrows here, and this possibly indicates bioreduction. Alanite and the rare filament carbonate and phosphate minerals show different behavior with re behaviors with respect to weathering. The cerium carbonate bastnazite shows no evidence of weathering whatsoever. In contrast, the yttrium phosphate xenotime shows fuzzy edges, evidence of dissolution. Uh, this is further highlighted in this focused ion beam section. Uh, the resulting weathering crust is rich in carbon, indicating a lightly biological component to the xenotheme weathering. In conclusion, I hope that I could give you a taste for the amazing natural laboratory that the Flinders Ranges represent. With respect to the immature weathering profile on Yerila, our preliminary data strongly suggests a biological control on the weathering of rare earth element minerals, with every mineral having its own story to tell. Thank you for your attention.